Thanks for joining us this morning. You may be seated. Well, good morning to each of you who are visiting uh, First Wesleyan Church, either in person or online. Glad that each of you are here. I hope those of you who are here got a bulletin on your way in. I'm going to highlight some of those things, as well as I'm going to share some other information. First of all, if you have an attendance record, if you please grab that out and fill out their question information and then place that in the offering plate, that would be a wonderful thing. And if you're viewing online, would you please right now text me, 605-430-3019. I'd love to know that you are watching, and that would be a, a wonderful thing. Please do that. Immediately following this service, uh, by the way, this is Happy Thanksgiving week, so Happy Thanksgiving, but immediately following this service, we're going to decorate for Christmas. I know it seems like Christmas might be a long way off, but it is just around the corner, and so if you're willing, would you stay? And uh, there's going to be a lunch provided, and then right after that, then we will decorate uh, the sanctuary and the building for Christmas, and we just need some help in that. So if you'd be willing to do that, that would be great. This evening, we have a Thanksgiving service at 5 o'clock. Love for you all to be here. I'm going to have a short devotional, but really, we're going to be singing some songs, and uh, then we're going to allow for people to give thanks. And so hopefully, you'll bring something in that you want to give thanks for. Uh, I'm not looking for a long monologue of everything that God has done in 2020 for you, but please be willing to do that. I also want to make mention of this, two things. One, the Thanksgiving service tonight will be live-streamed. So if you choose not to come and you would like to watch online, uh, feel free to do that. It might be a little hiccup because the microphone is going to go around a number of people and, and so we may have to, uh, it'll be some dead time a little bit, but that's okay. And then the, um, the other thing is this, if you uh, aren't going to be here or if you are here, uh, I'm going to mention this tonight, if you want to send me a text. Um, again, my number on the screen again there, Nick, thank you. Uh, if you want to send me a text of something that you're thankful for, that might get shared somewhere along the way, so I'm just offering that to you. Also, this week, there is no activities at the church, and so don't come on Wednesday night because we're not having any activities, as well as next Sunday, there's no Sunday school. So just plan for no Sunday school next Sunday. We have in the commons area some Christmas devotional books. Last several years, we've had some written by people in our church, for people in our church, and so I encourage each of you to grab one on your way out today. Uh, and if you want to pick one up for a neighbor, a coworker, or a friend, feel free to do that. They start the, the Friday after Thanksgiving and go through Christmas Day. They will encourage you, challenge you, and uplift you. And so please grab one of those before you leave today. Another thing I want to mention is in the flyer, in, in your bulletin in the flyer, is uh, about how we're helping this Christmas season. It's helping foster children. And what we want to do is we want to give at least 50 foster children that are in the system in South Dakota $25 gift cards. And if you want to give to that, just mark your check accordingly or send it in, however it works for you. Um, and uh, if you want to put it in an envelope, feel free to do that. Along with that, though, is we are giving them a Bible. The average age of one of these kids is 13 years of age, and so we didn't go buy them an adult Bible, and we didn't buy them a little New Testament. These actually are $20. They're called a teen study Bible, and so hopefully it'll be a great encouragement to them. So if you want to give to the $25 gift cards, you can do that, or if you want to give towards Bibles, that is a great thing as well. Here's what I believe. There are a number of kids, and Pastor Mark's been working with this. I, I don't know if we're ever going to know any of their names. Um, I don't know that we're privileged to do that because of just privacy laws. However, what will it be if someday um, we get to heaven and uh, somebody says, you know, I read a Bible and it was because of people in your church and uh, what a great day, what a great thing that would be. And so if you would like to give some money to a Bible or to a gift card for kids to have a Christmas, that would be a wonderful thing. There's other announcements in your bulletin, but those are all the ones that I'm highlighting today. I've talked enough. We want to go back into our singing. Would you stand with me again as we continue singing and praising our Lord and Savior? Oh, 
As we enter into this time of prayer this morning, I want to start off with a question. Isn't it great to wake up with breath in your lungs? Listen to the words of Psalm 150. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord through prayer as we continue on. The altars are open for those who have burdens, but also if you want to come up and you just have a praise on your heart this morning, the altars are open for that. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, great are you. As we just sung, your presence is welcome here. We invite you. We, we want you in our lives and in our, in our surroundings. And God, your name is greatly to be praised. You formed us from the dust. You formed us in our mother's room. And you gave us breath in our lungs. And let us return it to you this morning, O oh God. Let us praise your holy name. Let us know your goodness. Let, me, let us speak of your wonderful deeds, your mighty works. Lord, we praise you for these things this morning, for you're holy and no one is like you. We set you apart, God, for that is who you are. And Father, we confess that at times we fall short to bring you praise with this breath that you have given us, with the mind that you have given us, with the hands and feet that you have formed. God, we fall short in these things, and God, we confess that we have sinned. And we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, that you died for us. And your scripture says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God, we lean in the name of Jesus this morning. We plead in the name of Jesus this morning for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, thank you that you deeply care about us and those around us and all over the world. And I think of our missionaries, Tim and Tiffany Gallant in Cambodia. God, I pray that you would give, remind them of the breath that you have given them this morning, that you gave to them that they may put praise on their lips for you. God, I pray that you would give them the breath to continue to speak your gospel, to live your gospel. Be with Tiffany as she's been struggling with some medical issues with her heart. God, I pray that you would continue to encourage these two who have forsaken all in order that some may come or many may come, Lord, to your name's sake. God, I think of our sister church, the Solid Rock Community Church in Hermanster, Oregon, with Pastor Wilbert Clark. 
And God, I just pray for your presence there this morning. I pray that they would sense it, they would feel it. But God, I also pray that they would continue to impact their community for the name of Jesus Christ. And God, may that be the meditation on our hearts, that wherever we go, that we would impact whoever we meet for the name of Jesus Christ. With this breath you have given us, Lord, we will give you praise in all that we do. And Father, I think of our nation and those who are being affected by COVID-19. God, I just pray for your peace to come and overflow. God, I pray for your mercy, your comfort. God, I pray that you would remind us that we don't have a spirit of fear. That's not what you've given us, but you've given us a, a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. That is what you have given us. So, Father, let us walk in the spirit that you have given us. And Father, I just think of those who have been impacted by Hurricane Ada and Iota, those who have suffered loss in family. God, may your mercy be upon them. We cry out to you knowing that you, God, are the great physician, the great comforter. You have many names to praise you by. And so, Father, just be with these individuals, these nations that have been impacted by these natural disasters. And Father, as we continue in praise and worship, I pray that every word that proceeds out of Pastor Steve's mouth, Lord, every breath that he breathes and the sermon that he will provide for us that is given to you by, given to us by you, God, that we would internalize this message that no matter it would just move us, Lord, to do your will, to do your way. Let it press into our hearts. Father, we just thank you for this time that we can come and pray to you and praise your holy name. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The worship, to, uh, the praise team will actually be doing a special song, so please enjoy this song. Disappointment, grief, and fear 
gone. Sorrow for God, love's purest joys restore. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall be. In you I rest, in you I found my hope, in you I trust, you never let me go, I place my life within your hands alone, be still my soul, in you I rest in you I found my hope you I trust you never let me go I place my life within your hands alone be still my soul That's the title of the message today is, shh. Noises, they're all around us. Some noises are enjoyable. Some are not so enjoyable, of course. Many of us listen to music. Some of us whistle. When he was working, if he ever started whistling, that means he started getting frustrated at what he was doing. It wasn't a joyful whistle. It was, uh, I'm frustrated and I don't want to say anything wrong. Some of us enjoy the hum of a mower. Mm, and we enjoy that. One of the greatest noises that I've heard is that when one of my children was sick and you heard the ambulance coming, the siren was an awesome noise to hear. Many times it's like, I don't, I don't want to hear that at all, but man, that was a great noise. We enjoy the crowd cheering for us, and we hear the wind blow in South Dakota. We hear rain, and we hear hail on our roofs and on our cars. We enjoy the sound of television. We enjoy the sound of this. <laughs> we enjoy the sound of laughter, don't we? I personally think in 2020, we've kind of missed some laughter because it's been kind of dreary at times. And so I encourage you, go laugh a little bit. If you need to hear some good jokes, uh, find my two boys in, in somewhere and they have a bunch of jokes and uh, I don't know where they get them. They're just stored up in their brain. And that reminds me and then they'll tell us something. You may not laugh, but just laugh. It's okay. But there are some noises that we can do without, Right? Sitting at the table with somebody. You're like, uh, could you not please do that? Nails on a chalkboard. We don't have chalkboard much anymore, but nails on the chalkboard. Children whining, babies crying. That's not so much fun. Yeah, those aren't good. Yeah. Snoring in the middle of the night. You ever had somebody snore in the middle of the night? I, I was at a Christmas time, I think it was Christmas gathering, and uh, I was with my cousin, Will James, and we were staying in the same room, and everything was going fine until Uncle Bob came in because Will, something was going on with Will James. I don't know what was going on with Will James, but he wasn't sleeping well, so Uncle Bob came in. And then, guess what he started doing? Snoring. Oh, that was terrible. I was like, ah, oh, I won't be able to sleep at all. Beeping alarm clocks. You ever heard those before? What a delightful noise, huh? Or a smoke detector that needs a new battery. Beep. 
and you wait for whatever, however long it is, three minutes, beep, and you forget about it, and then sure enough, beep, and at three o'clock in the morning, that beep gets pretty old, and that's when you, <clears throat> if you're married, why don't you go get that, husband of mine, barking dogs, you like barking dogs? <laughs> whispering. Some of us don't like the, the noise of whispering because you're somewhere and somebody else is whispering and you can't quite make it out. And so you want to be able to hear. And so it really bothers you because you're not sure what they're saying. Or how about loud music? Any of you? No, no, no show of hands and no text from home. Um, tell me about loud music of an apartment building near you or a car. It's like, um, thank you for pulling up next to me. Thank you for sharing that music. I'm assuming you can hear that because I can hear it as well. Don't do this, but what about the sound of knuckles popping? Please don't do that because there are some people that don't like that, and I don't want you to get hit right now. Or again, barking dogs or snow, snoring or chewing or smacking or loud motorcycles. And have you heard a loud motorcycle in a recent day? Maybe you drive one of those and you think, oh, well, that's a great noise. The scraping of a fork on a plate or have I mentioned alarm clocks? Or how about yipping dogs? Not barking dogs, but little yippers. Whatever it is. Squeaky brakes, pull up, or maybe yours, or squeaks or rattles in vehicles. There's a bunch of noises that we hear, and I am thankful for my ears. Some of you can't hear very well, and so you wonder if, and I, I wasn't saying anything there. Those of you who can't hear, uh, I was just using my lips, but I enjoy being able to hear. It's a great thing but there is something important according to Scripture about having silence and solitude with God. Several of us in this room have a lot of silence. Like, you have silence all the time. You may be single, you may be widowed, you may be by yourself, your husband may never be home, your wife just leaves you alone, whatever it might be, you may just have a lot of silence. But I choose to believe that there's a number of us that have silence pretty much never. We don't do this very well. We don't have this spiritual discipline of silence very, very well. And so I want to talk to you about the spiritual discipline of silence and solitude. Do you have some time where you are just silent every day? It's a discipline that is needed. We're in this, this uh, series on spiritual disciplines a number of those have been Bible reading. Are you in God's Word? Are you reading God's Word daily? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you spending time in worshiping? Thank you for gathering for worship today in whatever way you came. Serving. Are you serving at your home? Are you serving in the community? Are you serving in the church? That's a way to have a spiritual discipline. Sharing of your faith with evangelism. The two T's, time and tithing. And then also, just a reminder from last week, fasting. And if you want to be a participant in the, the church fast tonight, uh, we're not going to have an, uh, any kind of treats out in the, in the fellowship hall, or in, not in the fellowship hall, in the commons area. Uh, after our time to together, we're just going to have a time of fasting. And so maybe you want to do that. Have you entered in time to a spiritual discipline of fasting? I'm going to use three scriptures today as we talk about silence and solitude. It's Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, Mark 1, verse 35, and Luke, Luke 4, verse 42. So if you would join me, I will read those. They're very similar. They're all talking about Jesus, and it's talking about when he got away. Here's what it says in Matthew chapter 14. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Mark 1, 35. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Luke 4, 42. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. 
And the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. What is silence? Silence is a voluntary and temporary abstention from speaking so that certain spiritual goals might be sought. What is solitude? Solitude is a voluntary and temporary withdrawing to privacy for spiritual purposes. I'm going to use the word silence. I'm going to use the word solitude somewhere along the way. And that means getting alone with God. Here's what Jim Elliott said. I think the devil has made it his business to monopolize on three elements. Noise, hurry, and crowds. Satan is quite aware of the power of silence. First thing I want you to see is this. What Jesus did, find a place. Where did Jesus go? Well, in Matthew 14, we see him, he went to a mountain. In Mark and Luke, it says that he went to a desolate place. We're not sure what that place is exactly, but he was a desolate place. If we're going to find a time in silence and solitude, it needs to be a definite place. It needs to be desolate. Do you have one? Do you have a place that you go? I know several of us live alone, and so you have a number of places to go that you could be silent. Some of you are married with a family, and you think, man, where am I going to find a place? That's hard to come by. Where is the place for you? Your bedroom, your living room, on the front porch, in your three-season room? A.W. Tozer said it this way. He said the only available place at one point in time in his life was to go into the furnace room. Now, you may have to go to the furnace room in order to find your silence and your solitude. Susanna Wesley, who was the mother of John and Charles Wesley and 17 children, I believe, it was said that she would sit in her rocking chair and she would pull her apron up over her head and that would be her quiet time. She didn't go to a desolate place. She sat there and she put it over her head. Does that mean she didn't hear noises? She probably did, but she tried to have a desolate place. Jonathan Edwards found seclusion in an open field. And if I may say, if you are one of those that are in the room, you live by yourself, you're single, you're all alone, I still think you need a specific place. You need a place for you to go because sometimes if we don't find a specific place, we just think God's all the way and we never find that specific place because we have all of those number of different options for us. Find a place, a specific place. It may change. It may be a recliner one year. It may be your bedroom the next year. It may be your front porch the next year. It may be outside from uh, May through October and inside from October through May because it's cold. That's okay. Find a place. Do you have that place? Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds. Noises are all around us. How quickly it is that we try to find our place and we try to get ready and then the dog says, I need to go out this morning. Set your minds on things above. We are bombarded by many things that are not above. We are, we are in the quagmire of the daily ongoings of life. We must escape from the daily pressure cooker to find solace in Almighty God. And we must be silent before Almighty God. We must be silent in certain situations as well. Uh, Some of us in this room, we're we're so eager, we're so so quick to say, well, let me me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Or people come to us and say, let me tell you. Um, I think sometimes maybe uh, um, Pastor Mark and Pastor Bradley don't like actually coming to me. Actually, probably a week and a half ago or so, Pastor Mark came in, and he, and he was talking to me into my office, and he was talking to me about something, and, and he said, now, what do, you, what do you think, Pastor Steve? And then he quickly said, well, I know what you're going to ask me, <laughs> which, what, which what I do is I say, well, what do you think? But sometimes we are so quick to say, okay, <clears throat> let me get a little closer to home for some of us. Um, Husbands are usually fixers, and so wives come and say, da 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 and husband says, well, let me tell you how it should be, and, and the wife says, no, I, I wasn't looking for that. I just wanted you to listen, and so um, 
marital counseling here for just a moment. Uh, sometimes it's good of us husbands to say, are you wanting me to <clears throat> come up with a suggestion or are you wanting me to listen? Which one are you wanting? Because in all honesty, sometimes it is I want you to fix it. I want a suggestion. Other times, just listen. But there are some, and that can be reversed. Sometimes men just want to talk, and the wife says, well, if I were you, let me tell you what I would do. And the man says, hold on here. I, I was just trying to give, I was just trying to share. We are very quick to say things, and we need to be silent. Let the Lord speak. It's okay if you don't have all the answers and somebody comes to you and says, well, what do you think? To say, I'm not sure. Or to say, you know, I have opinions, but what does the Lord say? Let's, let's take five minutes. Let's take, let's take 20 minutes. Let's take an hour and, and pray about it. Let's take 24 hours. Well, we don't have that time. Some instances you don't, but other instances to be silent and say, let's take a half an hour to be silent in the Lord's presence and see. We should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. We're so quick to insert our input and valuable and opinion and insight because we know. Uh, okay, uh, let me go down another road here. Some of you have been in the military, and so um, you were given instructions of how to do some, something, and so somebody comes to you, and you're like, well, let me tell you, I know how to do this because this is how we did it, and the PPEs and whatever, whatever, what, and the acrostics that, that you get rattled at if you're in the military, which is fine, but sometimes you do it. Be silent. If you are one that has silence a lot, do you have silence not just by yourself but with God? And it doesn't necessarily be that you have to are far away from noises and people in order to pray. The second thing I want you to hear is this. Find a time. <clears throat> Find a time. Noises are all around us. This is going to be a battle for your time. I liken this to an athletic contest. Many of you um, know athletics. And uh, so you, when you get ready to go to an athletic contest, you have a game plan or somebody has a game plan. Okay, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go here. You're going to go here. We're going to do play two, blue, whatever it might be. You're ready for the game. And then all of a sudden, once the game starts, they do something they're not supposed to do. You, no, you're not supposed to stand over there. When we were drawing it up, you're over here, and now you're messing it up. And so, you, no, you, no, 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 no. You can't do that during the game. What do you do? You adjust to that, and you say, oh, we have to change a little bit. Someone gets six, the ball is bouncier, and everything you plan has to be changed, but you stay in the game and you change. And so I encourage you to choose to find a time, and please know the enemy of your soul does not want you to have silence and solitude with Almighty God. And some have left silence to let the noises of the day annoy, overtake, and overwhelm you. You have to be disappointed disciplined in silence and solitude. Let me give you for instance, some of you like noise when you sleep. Thus you have a fan that runs all night long and it provides white noise. And that's like delightful for you for whatever reason. Side note, I didn't tell this in first service, I'll tell it now. I went into a lady's room one time, nobody here, so it's not you. And um, I'm visiting with her in the hospital. And I, I'm there in the hospital room, and uh, we're talking, and all of a sudden, I'm just hearing this noise. And I'm like, boy, that's pretty annoying. What in the world is that? So I'm, I'm talking to her and trying to listen to her and being distracted by this noise, and Finally, she takes a breath somewhere along the way, and I say, do you hear that? And she says, yeah. I said, well, what is that? And so she had a little noise box on her tray, and it was white noise. And so I'm trying not to be like, what in the world are you doing, lady? Because it was really weird to me. But I, I, I was like, oh, what's that? Well, they were doing construction here in the building. And all that pounding was bothering me. So I got some white noise to drown out the pounding noise. And I thought, I'd rather have the pounding noise if, if I was that lady. But we get noise. And what happens 
on the night that the electricity goes off. You hear all the birds and you hear the chirping and you're not able to hear the because you've conditioned yourself to the noise at night. We do this as well. We condition ourselves to the noises all the time. We hear the beeps from our phone telling us something. And then when it is silent, some of us go crazy. Others of us, of course, enjoy the silence. And if you are one that can't handle silence, I suggest that you look into your life to allow silence and solitude to happen. Find a time. Jesus provides us examples. If you see in Matthew chapter 14, when he went up on the mountain by himself to pray, when evening came, in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, and rising very early in the morning, and in Luke 4, verse 42, and when it was day, I don't care when you find silence and solitude, it's that you find it. And for some of you, very early in the day is not good. It's like, I'll just sleep with the Lord, and I don't think that He wants me to sleep. I think, he want, I, think I should chat with Him a little more. In the evening, you're thinking about things for the next day. You're thinking about supper. It doesn't... What, 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 what the neat part here is this. Jesus wasn't so regimented, in my opinion, of a certain time. It was very early. I have in my mind, it was before the sunlight ever came up. And if it was day, I have in my mind that it was when it was day. And if it was evening, it must have been evening. He found a time whenever he needed to be with the Lord. And if you look in the Matthew one, in the Matthew passage, if you happen to have your Bibles open or you can open them, what was happening that day? That day was when he was with feeding of the 5,000. There was so much going on, but he still said, I need to get alone and be in a desolate place. Don't feel guilty. Well, you know, the Bible says Jesus got up very early in the morning, and I don't do that. Don't feel guilty about that. Find your time. Be creative and find a time that you can have silence and solitude with Almighty God. One of the reasons to find time alone with God is kind of like fasting, maybe to discern something, seek direction from Him. But it can happen with solitude as well. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn over to Luke chapter 6. In Luke chapter 6, we see Jesus doing this. Here's what it says in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. In these days, he, being Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them 12, whom he named apostles. And then we get the name of the apostles there. He left, and he went to a desolate place. He went to the mountain to pray, and then he was able to make the decisions of who the 12 apostles were. Our bodies and spiritual lives need respite. If we don't receive us, then we can find ourselves in an emergency. Take time now to rejuvenate with the Lord in silence. A while back, I developed a little spot on the inner side of my leg here. And it got to be about the size of a quarter. And, and uh, you know, I tried to take care of it and ended up going to the dermatologist. The dermatologist said, it's eczema, and uh, you're going to be fine. You're going to live. And uh, she says, you know, if you would apply, because we live in a dry climate, if you would just apply lotion, then this spot would not have developed. But it did. And uh, so I finally went, and she gave me some cream and lotion, whatever. I can buy lotion over the counter, of course. Daily application of lotion helps my skin. Probably helps your skin as well. Daily application of silence helps my spiritual life. If we don't find ourselves doing those daily things of silence and solitude, then there becomes an issue in our lives. Maybe for you, noises, they're all around. Maybe you start with five minutes, maybe a half an hour. Can you, could you schedule some solitude time for two hours that you just plan on spending with the Lord, going somewhere with Him and just spending time with Him, maybe, maybe for a day? If you're married, maybe chat with your spouse and say, would this be helpful for you that you could just go away and just have some time for an hour and then allow them to do that? If you're a husband in the room, say, dear... <laughs> Would it be helpful for you 
that I take care of the kids? I think she would say yes, as well as vice versa. Husband, would it be good for you? If you're a mom and, and, and you would like some solitude, maybe trade off with another mother and say, hey, would you watch my kids for the morning and I'll watch your kids in the afternoon and, and kind of switch off. Now, if you're a mom, be careful of this because here's what's going to happen. If you're away for a couple of hours, then when you come back, it's like... <laughs> And some of you have stayed away from doing that because you just know all the things are going to be on your plate. And so I encourage you, put a crock pot meal together so you don't have to rush back into life. But we need moments to refresh the soul. Not only finding time to be silent before the Lord, but sometimes we just need to not speak. Jesus modeled this before Pilate. Pilate says, don't you want an answer? Don't you understand what I can do? And Jesus remained silent. A gentle answer turns away wrath. The third point is this. Turn the noise off. We get in our place. We find our time. And then all of a sudden, the motorcycle comes by and it disrupts us. Oh, I need to get that done. Turn the noise off. What are some of the noises? Praise songs. What? Praise songs are great, Pastor Steve. Sometimes we can get more focused on the praise songs than on the Lord, and we miss it. Now, I think praise songs aren't bad. Please hear me. <laughs> but sometimes we need to just turn those off because we focus more on music than we do on the Word and on God. Turn your cell phone off, maybe for five minutes. It works. I don't know if you've tried that in recent days, but there are power buttons on these things. You can like, you have to hold a little longer, but it turns off. Now, if you do that, and if you are one that you're around your husband or wife a lot or kids, you need to let them know. Okay, from 10.55 to 11 o'clock, I'm going to turn my phone off and I'm going to spend some time with the Lord. Just know that. If the world blows up, wait till 11 and I will get to it. Podcast, television, radio, turn them off. It's okay. We can do that. I often go on runs and as I go on runs, I don't listen to music uh, most of the time, I, I pray during my runs. Now, my, my, my prayer is not, God, help me to finish this run. That's, that's, that's not my prayer. Maybe that would be your prayer. But it's interesting how we go on runs, and we go on walks, and we run on the treadmill. And what do we do? We turn on the tel television so we don't have to think about what we're doing here. Or, well, I'm, I'm in a multitask today. I'm going to listen to this podcast. That can happen. But there are some times, maybe, when we just need to take those things out, and we just need to walk and listen to what God has for us. Many of us need to realize that we have an addiction, and that addiction is to noise. We turn on music the first thing in the morning. If one of the first things you do in the morning is turn on the television, maybe you should think about that. Now, I know several of us are alone, and the television provides noise for you, but maybe tuning into God's Word could be a growth area. There was a video I watched a number of years ago that was part of a series. Each video went about 10 minutes in length, and they would talk about something. The one video that I'm referring to was, was talking about silence. The guy talked for about two minutes, and then it went silent. And I continue to watch. And about 30 seconds into it, there were words that came on the screen and it talked about silence and how we don't like silence. We don't like silence. Actually, they sent those videos out to a number of people and there were a number of people that wrote back and said, that one was only two minutes. Can we get our money back? Because, uh, I mean, it wasn't very long because they weren't willing to wait in silence for the rest of it. There is worship. Let's see, I'm looking around the room. There's only about one of you that has, to, two of you that have to deal with that at this point in time, that noise. But there's a noise that comes. There's a worship that be, should be silent. Habakkuk 2, verse 20. 
but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Zephaniah 1.7, be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guest. Zechariah 2.13, be silent all flesh before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Psalm 62 verse 1, my soul waits in silence for God only, from him is my salvation. Psalm 62.5, my soul waits in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. May God speak to us in the silence. If we have not quiet in our minds, outward comfort will do no more for us than a golden slipper on a gouty foot is what John Bunyan says. We don't do a very good job with silence, even in worship. A couple months ago, we had communion. And instead of having music played over here or playing out here, I just had it be quiet. Some of you didn't like that at all because we want some background noise. During prayer time, a time when we're silent, we have background noise. It's okay be silent. Elijah had a crazy schedule. He was working hard for the Lord. He went against the prophets of Baal and then was fleeing, and he found himself in a difficult place, and then God spoke. Here's how he spoke. Was it in the wind? Those of you who know the story know it wasn't in the wind. Was it in the earthquake? No, it wasn't in the earthquake. Was it in the fire? No, it wasn't in the fire. What was it in? It was in the whisper. 1 Kings 19, 12. And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. May you and I hear the whisper of the Lord. Now hear me in this. Sometimes God speaks very loudly. And he says, you need to do this. And you're sitting in a service or somebody says something to you. And it's like, boom, I got it. Other times, he whispers. And are we finding ourselves in a place to hear his whisper in silence and solitude? And number four, be alone with God. We try to find a place. We try to find a time. We try, try to do what we can do to turn the noises off. And then the dog says, I need to go out. We need to be alone with God. Maybe some of us are scared to be alone with God. What will he say? What will I say? What will he ask me to do? Maybe he'll ask me to go to Africa or something. I think back to a loving dad. Some dads don't know how to just be with their kids. They lecture and rant and rave and all that. But think of a loving father that just wants to be with his kids. Whether it be playing a game, reading, cuddling, laughing together, doing some physical activity, he just wants to spend time with you. And that's what God wants. He wants to spend time with you in silence, to speak into you, to reaffirm you, to bring you into an understanding with him alone. And actually, when we have um, disciplines of silence and solitude, we can actually achieve the spiritual disciplines even better. You ever tried to pray when other people are praying out loud? That's really difficult to do. Some of you had prayer meetings like that uh, a number of years ago. We don't do that much anymore. We did that when I was in Mexico on a mission trip. All right, we're going to pray. Everybody just pray out loud at the same time. I'm trying to figure out what I'm praying, and, and I'm supposed to listen to this guy, and this guy's praying, and, and whatever. It, it was hard to do. And so there's something about prayer, of being alone with God, when you can really focus. Bible study. You ever tried to read the Bible and do Bible study, and then you have kids running around or things going on? It's like, shh, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to read the Word of God here. Whatever it might be. Memorization of God's Word. You ever tried to memorize something with people? It's hard to memorize. By the way, that's a biblical spiritual discipline that I'm going to come to in, a com in future weeks of memorizing God's Word. How are you doing in the discipline of memorizing God's Word? Have you memorized it in recent day? Here, let me give you an, an opportunity to start thinking about it. 2021, are you going to memorize God's Word? What do you have as a discipline to memorize God's Word in your life? I have hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Maybe a, a scripture, maybe a verse a month might be an idea. Maybe you want to do it as a family or as a couple or maybe by yourself or with someone else. Anyway, um, we're going to go there sometime, but it's hard to memorize God's Word when you have noises in your, in your head. Jonathan Edwards was intrigued with a young woman, and her name was Sarah Pierpont. Of her, he said this, she hardly cares for anything except to meditate on him. 
that being God. She loves to be alone, walking in the fields and groves, and seems to have someone invisible, always conversing with her. He would marry that Sarah, and yes, their life changed with kids, but what a joy she had with the Lord. Do you have this relationship that others just see that, that you carry in a conversation with the Lord, and it may not be in silence all the time, but, but you derive your energy from that silence and solitude? Have we as husbands and wives succumbed ourselves to talking so much of earthly things? We can talk about the weather, we can talk about health, we can talk about masks, we can talk about the election, we can talk about vacations, and we've missed out on the deeper things of our Lord. Have we discussed biblical and godly things? One of the great ways to talk on godly things is to be with God and to know his heart. So here's my encouragement to you. Over lunch today, talk about some godly things. Hey, what have you been reading in your Bible? Oh, wow, neat. What what did you get out of Pastor Steve's sermon? (laughs) Well, I need to be quiet more often, maybe. Talk of places also over lunch about places of silence. You may need to discuss as husband and wife, can I give you some time that you can have silent? Or where do you like to go? Talk about those things so you can have silence and solitude with the Lord. Mark 6, 31, Jesus says this to his disciples. Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. Doesn't that sound good? Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. Some of us in this room or watching online need to have silence and solitude with the Lord. Some of us do a great job of being silent. (laughs) We don't say much. But it's not silence with God. We need silence focused with our Heavenly Father. And one of the best things to learn from a time of solitude may be this. You don't have to carry the burden alone. God comes alongside of you and says, it's okay. I'm there with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. You don't have to carry this burden alone. I will give you my comfort and my direction. And God is the one who will sustain. Will you find time to be silent before the Lord? Again, some of you have silence a lot, but we're bombarded by noises all day long. We must work to have a discipline of silence, to focus on God, not just to be noise-free, though that's good. So when when is your day to be, when is your time of day to be silent? Do you have an hour this week where you could just be silent in the Lord's presence? Find God in the silence. Would you stand with me today? as we close in prayer. God, in the silence of this moment, I sure have been rattling a lot about silence. But it's nice to be in a place called church where we can hear about silence with you. Even as I pray, I hear noises from Elkville Road, noises from lights. Pretty soon we'll hear noises from kids and other people outside the sanctuary. I just want to thank you for times of silence. And I pray that you would encourage us to find those places and those times to turn off the noise and to be alone with you. Oh God, you desire that so much. And thank you that you continue to allow us moments to come and be silent with you. I pray this week that as we find time and as we make time in those silent times that you would just overwhelm us with your presence and we say, oh, surely it was the good to be with the Lord today. And I pray those times of silence and solitude would be so rich. God, please forgive us for times that we just have to have noises on. Background music, beeping noises. But honestly, Lord, some noises are very, very distracting 
and disgusting, but I pray, God, that we would find you in the silence. God, I pray that if there be somebody who's listening online or here in this sanctuary today that doesn't know you, that in the silent of this moment, they would just say yes to you. Sometimes some people who don't know you, it's really tough to be silent before you because not sure what to say, or under conviction, or just confusion. And so I pray that you would minister to somebody and they would know you as Savior and Lord. I pray that in these times of silence that we would be so emboldened that in the times that we're around others, they would just see you in us. So God, give us these opportunities this week. Thank you that we have the opportunity to find silence.